praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this evening. Apologies for any of the glitches you guys may have caught. Uh, we're still learning this whole new Google thing. So, you know, uh, we, while we try to be as polished as possible and professional as possible, it is what it is. Life is what it is. <laughs> it's the real dealio. So I don't worry about stuff like that. So apologies for any glitches. Um, thank you so much. We certainly didn't mean to step on uh, Brother Fitz's prayer. We thought we were mu muted. So if anything went out, you know, again, apologies for that. Tonight, I have with me as our special guest, Sister Renee Rose. Praise Rowan. the She's Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I also have King Sister Jesus. Angel Martin from Channel by the Same Name. And uh, same thing with Sister Renee Rowland, if anybody's joining us that is not familiar with this broadcast. And also I have in the background, Brother Ben, who has a channel name uh, by the same name, but he doesn't have any content just yet. He's working on it, but he's so busy with his gracious self producing my broadcast and another other people's broadcast that he doesn't have time to do his own just yet. But I know he's got things, irons in the fire and works he's working on when he ends up dropping content. I'm sure we're going to be blown away. Um, I, I'm just going to say something. He wasn't expecting me to say this. I'm very impressed with Brother Ben's um, take on his approach to the Bible and the way that he stacks things with scripture upon scripture to come up with the concepts that he does. And, and it's, it's really, really beautiful. And uh, I, I appreciate it. And this is one of the reasons I've asked him to be a part of late night with Lisa and friends. I'm so glad that all of you decided to join us this evening. We're going to be continuing our discussion Probably briefly on on monarch programming we have some more insights we wanted to share about that i know sister angel is going to elaborate on that i call her my walking encyclopedia because i have yet to stump that girl if i if i ask her a question she, uh, do you know about this and boom she's she's on it it's like wow i haven't stumped her yet i'm scripture trying upon scripture and then to come. also um with sister renee with her beautiful preaching the untwisted sister, as I believe Brother Luke of the channel, Brother Luke says, and also see, I don't know if he puts content on that, but he does on CES, which is Church of the Eternally Secure. I'm mostly preaching the choir because most of y'all already know that. <laughs> so again, thank you everyone for joining us this evening. So I want to give a chance for everybody to say hello to everyone. To my guest, I'll go to you first, Sister Renee Rowland. How's it going tonight, girl? Well, I am very happy to be here. I was uh, happy to see that the chat's filling up on such a, a late time here on the East Coast. This is just great. Um, and I'm looking forward to the conversation. I, I like the atmosphere. It's uh, it's more relaxed, you know, and the conversation just grows organically. So I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes tonight. And thanks for that lovely intro. Oh, praise the Lord. You know, that was the whole concept that the Lord gave me. Uh, about this broadcast because I this wasn't even on the radar screen for me and the reason I wanted to do it was I saw this when it, when he showed me this this confusion that people were you know with like you can't we believers in the Lord Jesus Christ we love the Lord and we can't talk about flat earth or NASA and some of its scams the government and its scams the different things we've discovered that are fake and phony and we can't have those discussions I'm like the devil is a liar and so that was the concept that we could come together at the table as believers, sit and have a cup of coffee or whatever your favorite beverage is, and just talk to one another and let the audience, the people of God, listen in as we're having this discussion. And everybody put down the rocks. We all believe in Jesus. We're just having a conversation. Sister Angel, how you doing back there, girl? You didn't fall asleep on me, did you? No, never that. Um, no, I'm doing good tonight. Just uh, excited as always to be here on Saturday. And yep, we're going to have a kind of a free form discussion, I guess. But uh, we, we're probably just going to touch on a few things we didn't cover last last week um, and then see where it goes from there. So, Praise the Lord. And also to my man of many words back there, Brother Ben. Hey, everyone. It's good to be here. I'm always 
but always love this conversation. Um, I like how you likened it to a, um, you know, just a, a couple of friends getting, getting, gathered around a table, uh, you know, and drinking coffee and, and shooting, uh, shooting uh, breeze. <laughs> so I, I love right. being here. Looking forward to it. Amen. Yeah, we dropping the rocks at the door. I said, I just, I couldn't. I was like, this, this is mis mess has to stop. And I think that this and other broadcasts, because I, I hope people do the same thing, where we're believers, we should be able to come together and discuss anything and leave believers hugging and kissing one another, even if we didn't agree on what we discussed. I just, I just didn't even understand that. Because I'm like, when I get together with my family, Oh, if you think I'm opinionated, what if I told you I was the mild one in the bunch, you know? <laughs> so we get together, we don't get together and beat each other up and everybody leave with a bloody nose and a black eye. Come on, who going to do that? And I'm seeing this over and over again, different and I, formats and channels. And, and, and it's okay. People can do what they want on their channel. That's their business. But I'm like, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, is this what we're supposed to be doing? That we can't sit up and discuss these different things and discover and 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 share what we've learned and what we discuss. So look, a person can receive it or don't. It's always your option. It ain't heard nothing. <laughs> so that was the whole concept. And I'm glad that everyone here has decided to join us this evening. And thank you so much I just, for your time, beloved. Thank you so very much. Salutations to everyone out there. So, Sister Angel. I'm going to let you take it away, girl. We're going to pick up with the conversation that we left off with last week because we kind of cut the Monarch programming discussion a little bit short because Sister Renee has to go early. She has to get up for church in the morning. So she'll be leaving us again early tonight. This broadcast will not go on as long as it normally does. And one of the reasons is I try to I try to be cognizant of what's going on, not only on in the lives of the people who are here on the panel at, at this roundtable discussion, if you will, but also... Uh, the fact that uh, we're all undergoing a lot of stress right now with all the craziness that's going on in this demonic world we live in and just the busyness of our daily lives. And I don't want anybody to be overwhelmed. So if we have to take a time out, cut things short, we're going to be considerate of one another. I always try to do that. So that's one of the reasons we're not going to go on as long tonight. So go ahead, Sister Angel. Take it away in continuing the discussion on Monarch Programming. Well, um, so I just thought it might be pertinent to mention a few things that um, I thought other people might be able to use. Uh, not, like I said, not to go on a witch hunt and try to figure out if people they know are, are my control program, but um, things I wish that I had known, uh, uh, you know, because like, like I explained last week, I, I, I found out that I kind of grew up in sort of a, a, an MK Ultra hive or something where there was a, a whole lot of it going on and a whole lot of people I went to school with had uh, you know been subjected to this stuff and um, and there's ways that like there's commonalities that you know retrospectively I I was able to to notice and really you know try to kind of you know detect it in the future because um, you know this is it, it's spiritual warfare like you know the, these people that are involved in this I mean they they have they're dedicated to trying to uh, I think, you know, in a lot of cases, um, not, not, not just harm other people and trying to, you know, sow uh, strife and, you know, and, you know, and curses and, uh, and, and also to, you know, create more people like them. Like I said, you know, I was kind of targeted. Uh, I don't know if I went into this really deeply, but I was targeted uh, from a young age because they knew about my family's lineage and my best friend's family. Um, so the main reason that they, she was allowed to become like close friends with me, despite I was an outsider, I was not, you know, a part of their, you know, their cult. Um, and normally that would be, you know, that, you know, they would try to keep her, you know, away from, from somebody that was not involved so that, you know, I, no, there would no, be no risk of somebody finding out, right. That wasn't involved. Uh, but it was uh, worthwhile uh, for them to, to let her become close to me in order to perhaps one day gain access to my children uh, where I'd have them because uh, they couldn't, they couldn't uh, harm me. Like it was like some type of, you know, she explained it like some type of, um, for, you know, spiritual law, some sort of, you know, I was kind of off limits because my, my parents were, were stayed believers and I was a child. So I was under their, their headship. 
And so they weren't, you know, I was over at her house just for the night. You know, I had no idea the danger I was in with those people. I, um, you know, I, 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 I was really close to her family, but they never, they never harmed me, at least in, in the sense of, you know, being abused or anything like that, because they weren't uh, allowed to, uh, from what she told me, they weren't allowed to spiritually. Although, you know, I do believe that they, they cast uh, spells and stuff. They, you know, they, they, I think the reason I had <laughs> sleep paralysis most of my childhood was probably to do with, with my association with her and her family. Um, I think they probably uh, worked on me in that way. Uh, you know, maybe some types of curses or whatever, but they never actually like, directly tried to program or abuse me. And they, they had access to me ever since I was in preschool when, um, you know, and I still don't know if the reason why my grandmother was sought out and contacted and invited to put me in this preschool because it was a special like invitation only co-op. It was called, um, it was like the Big Pine Key Co-op. Uh, Presbyterian, it was out of a Presbyterian church, but it only existed for a few years. Um, it was only like, it was created by, really by these people, by this like coven that's on Big Pine Key. And they invited certain people and a great deal of those people that I went to preschool with, you know, I knew all these people from preschool to, to, to graduation. And, you know, I know a lot of them still today. They were involved. They were in these families that were involved. But, um, and so I'm still not sure if that's the reason why they actually invited me, uh, invited, you know, my grandmother to sign me up because she didn't really know anybody. She wasn't, uh, you know, she, she you know, she, we lived in a pretty remote area in Sugarloaf Key and, you know, she, uh, we were kind of insular. So it was weird that they sought her out to invite, invite her to, to enroll me there. Um, and uh, even when I was a kid, I mean, I knew like two of my teachers like they were open witches, you know, what, you know, I guess we thought of it as like some hippie thing. Right. So that's the number one. Number one is that um, a lot of these families that uh, were involved in this stuff and, you know, kind of in a, a coven together, which I have touched on before, like, you know, I'm not just <laughs> making this stuff up. If you look up the serial killer, Charlie Brandt, uh, a B R A N D T, uh, the murders that were attributed to him were actually committed by him and the rest of the cult. He was actually really close friends to my friend's parents. They called him Charlie. I think his name is Charles. They called him Charlie. And, um, and anyway, he tried to leave the cult and uh, like 20 years later, he tried to, because these were unsolved at the time. And about 20 years after they happened, which they happened in the late eighties, early nineties, he tried to escape during a hurricane evacuation. He tried to use that as an excuse to leave the Keys, um, which apparently they were not allowed to do without leaving a, a family member behind as collateral. He tried to, to take his whole family and leave and get away. And that's when they killed him in such a way that it made it look like he had killed his family and himself. Uh, and that, you know, it would, end, it would kill two birds with one stone he would be taken care of for trying to leave, but also the police would think they solved these unsolved cases because the very particular MO that was used in the series of ritual murders, which are reported on, I mean, they were, they were uh, considered to be like satanic uh, ritual murders in the keys. There's even like a tabloid headline, like Satan in paradise that you can find on the internet uh, discussing the, you know, back when these uh, murders occurred, when they were still unsolved. And um, anyway, the MO, I won't go into exactly what it was, but it was really specific and gruesome. And that's how they killed his family. And then they made it look like, you know, he killed himself uh, after killing his family, you know, out of guilt or whatever. But it, you know, the cops pinned all the murders on him to where he was the serial killer and, you know, because of the MO that was used to kill his family. And anyway, um, so that's one way you can kind of verify what I'm saying. Like there's some, some point of reality that I can show you <laughs> that uh, doesn't necessarily reveal the identities of these people that I'm talking about, um, like my friend's family and stuff. But um, anyway, um, the way that these people came off, the way that you would kind of write off a lot of, 
you know, anything weird that you might know about them is that they came off to be like, kind of like hippies, like kind of like boomer hippies, you know, who maybe went to Woodstock when they were younger and they just never totally grew out of it. And so they were into like, you think like new agey type stuff or, or, or whatever, you know, and they might even say that they're into Wicca, but um, in reality, they were into much darker things. And that was kind of just the front, but it was a great way to explain away anything strange they ever said or anything you ever found out about them, you just kind of shrugged it off like they were into weird hippie stuff, right? But they were also like pillars of the community. They were not, you know, just like, like they weren't like low lives or, you know, uh, low class people. They were, you know, well-known, well-connected people in our community. They, you know, you would almost not even believe that these were the type of people that were involved in this stuff. Um, now, when it comes to spotting, like a lot of like especially with the children the younger the kids people my age um people that uh you know i, I later realized or found out directly were involved um in this stuff and, and you know born into this um uh, and i and i've i've talked to other people too who've who've had made this discovery in their own lives you have people in this uh, very uh congregation who've had very similar experiences to me um and, you know, these are kind of consistent themes. Um, a lot of times, especially if they're men, uh, they male, they'll have some sort of military connection. They might have been in the military. But um, but if, if not, now, the, you know, and I think that's probably actually more rare <laughs> than the more uh, than the people that are not, that, you know, don't that are just remain civilian. But um, in my best friend's case and all the people that I knew of that were actually involved in this this cult. Um, they would have very strange lives. Like they, they would seem to almost never fully mature, you know, like she lived with her family or, or sort of like off of her family. Um, you know, she still does like well into her thirties. And so do a lot of people that are, are also victims that were down there that we knew or, or her boyfriends. Um, and uh, there will be a lot of travel, you know, Sister like Angel. In her, yes. So go on, I know sorry. I'm interrupting you, but I, I got. No, let's go. I'm uh, just going to keep talking until somebody over. stops me. Oh <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah. So, but I know it's just, yeah, so go ahead and ask questions. I have a I don't question. Mind it. Is yes. it uh, we we stop with people who never fully mature, and you were going to describe some of the situations concerning yes. that. But I wanted to know, do you think now you because you you I like how you think, so I want to ask you a question on this. If if we're being, if we've all, the whole, let's just say the United States, I don't know about other countries and how their programming goes, but here in the United States, the way television works, the way the media is a part of it and everything, do you think we've all been to some, even if it's just a micronized level, been monarch programmed for like, for example, kind of. buzzwords, trigger words, phrases yeah. to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like mass media level programming is what I've kind of referred to it as like, um, you know, there's like the actual individual, you know, uh, bloodline family type programming or even just like there's like military programming, I think, which people who aren't born into it, weren't abused as kids, but they kind of come into the military as adults and they, they do some level of programming. But then there is like the mass media programming. Um, mm -hmm. And I do believe that it's, you know, th that that we do, a lot of us have been affected in similar ways. I think that's also why a lot of people in my generation, especially, aren't leaving home until they're well into their 30s and things like that. There's kind of a lot of uh, stunted growth. And yeah, I, ha I have noticed that before. I have noticed okay. that sometimes it's almost hard to decipher the difference. But, um, mm. uh, you know, it, in my friend's case, and then in a lot of the people that, you know, she's, uh, that were also, you know, abused alongside her or, you know, were part of this, the same cult. Like, for instance, her relationships were all arranged. And so one of the weird things was I noticed that she would, she was very beautiful and she was always dating these guys who, now listen, if they had wonderful personalities or they had like a whole lot else to offer, I wouldn't have been so superficial. But like mm -hmm. of all the guys she dated or even married, never was one even like somewhat physically attractive. And they mm -hmm. were also very like there like none of them really had much to offer and a lot of times she was mm -hmm. actually supporting them off of you know her family's money which it didn't seem like her family was like rolling in dough but that was another thing they just sort of seemingly had unlimited funds even though they didn't live an extremely 
extravagant lifestyle, but it was, so it was weird. Like if you were to try to gauge how, how much, you know, let's say expendable income they had just from looking at their home and their lifestyle and their vehicles, you would have thought they were just, you know, now in the keys, everything's very expensive. So it's a little bit harder to, to notice. It's not quite the same as, as you might, how you might class other people in other areas of the country. But, um, uh, you know, you would think maybe like solid middle class, maybe a little bit upper middle class, right? But they had, you know, no limit of money. Like they were, you know, she was, mm -hmm. she was living in England for two years with an apartment. She had an apartment and she didn't, I mean, she kind of worked here and there, but she'd always end up quitting her job or have some emotional breakdown. And, um, and they were footing the bill for a flat mm -hmm. in Leeds, England <laughs> for no reason. Right. And for no apparent reason. And, um, uh, you know, and then she'd also take all these really strange, long road trips, sometimes for months at a time. And it never really seemed to make sense. Like these were assignments that she was on. She was actually mm -hmm. like being put on assignment. They were doing, who knows what she was doing, how they were using her. But, um, this is, this is kind of, uh, what, you know, what it looked like for her in her case. But, um, you know, uh, some of the other stuff that you'll notice is like people that uh, are agoraphobic, they will have, there's a, there's a common, uh, something called uh, alien abduction syndrome, mm -hmm. right? And I don't believe in aliens, you know, obviously I think that they're, they're demons, right? And, uh, but, mm -hmm. you know, if you look at the symptoms of alien abduction syndrome, which are supposed to be signs that somebody has been abducted by an alien, especially if they ever saw a UFO, because the theory is nobody just sees a UFO. If you see one, you were abducted and you just don't remember it, right? Well, mm -hmm. a lot of these symptoms are very similar to what my friend had. And by the way, she also, when we were kids, had an alien abduction experience uh, that I'll never forget because she and another friend of mine, Jasmine, who was also in the cult, she, they went missing for a few hours one night mm -hmm. and um, they uh, uh, and Jasmine never wanted to talk about this, but I, I compared their two stories like, you know, a couple of days after this happened, Jasmine, who like loved attention and was normally, especially if this was a spoof, a joke, she would have been very eager to tell a big fake story, but she had she didn't want to talk about it at all. And mm -hmm. I think this was kind of a program. This is one of the things, guys, is that if you know people that have a lot of these weird supernatural experiences all the time. Maybe they say <laughs> that they were contacted by aliens or abducted or, or they're just constantly seeing supernatural things. Now, of course they might just, you know, we have some sort of spiritual attachment, you know, maybe some type of demonic, uh, like not haunting, but, you know, basically a, a you know, a demon occur, some, something like that following them around. But um, in my experience, all the people that I knew like that who had these really, repeated like fantastical like supernatural encounters and stories and uh they were actually involved in this stuff and um sometimes it's actually screen memories what they call screen memories so um for instance when jasmine and my friend were walking home one night from their other friend's house another friend well she was also you know in this cabin her mother was one of the preschool teachers they um, saw a really tall, impossibly skinny, like humanoid shape walking down the road behind them. And it was like glowing, right? So it kind of looked like a very tall, slender, white alien type creature, but very, very, very slender. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, then all the streetlights started going out one by one leading up to them until like the final one that they were under, you know, was the last one. And they went and hid behind some trash cans. Uh, and this thing was like pursuing them. And um, they, uh, the, the last, the next thing they remember is waking up in her bed uh, mm. together. And, and so, you know, I, I, I remember hearing this when we were kids, but then of course, later on when she told me about it, you know, once we were grown ups and we had figured all this stuff out with her and her family, you know, she, she said she doesn't know if it was actually a real memory or if it was a screen memory, something that they implant in your mind to cover up the memory of a programming session. Mm -hmm. So that they'll do that so that if you start to, to remember anything weird happening from that day or that time, you'll, you'll have this, this, this false memory that is also very fantastical and hard to believe. So it will discredit you. You see yeah. what I'm saying? 
So a lot of people that will have, you know, if you listen to these supernatural, paranormal, like podcasts and stuff, where they'll have guests talk about their experiences, these people that have had a lot of these experiences ever since childhood, very suspicious of. I'm very okay. suspicious of whether they were actually uh, a victim of ritual abuse. Because, okay, let me let me stop yeah. you here, because you said a okay, whole lot. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I want to give Sister Renee. Yes, a chance yes. <laughs> to come in and I wanted to ask you sister Renee girl have you ever heard I know we heard about monarch programming because we saw the movie Manchurian Candidate which right. we would say is probably one of the extreme forms as sister Angel's <laughs> describing where they've taken people and oh, actually yeah. programmed them and done these things to them well what things do you think you've seen in your life because I know you were connected to Hollywood and for a period of time and and saw certain things or are there any things that you saw that you can share that would give insight as to some of the things that sister angel has just shared with us that maybe you saw well uh, i'll tell you the real real high up ones i only knew on a superficial basis mm -hmm. uh, yeah. celebrities that i was very close to they had already had the damage done to them by the time they were in my life like Corey Haim. He, he mm -hmm. For six months, but that was right before his death. So, um, I I don't know any person in Hollywood directly for certain that has been programmed. Like, I don't want to say that is true because I I just cannot confirm it, and I have not right. had anyone close to me. Say it, so, I want to be careful about that. But um, I will say I know that there it's a very sick environment. Um, poor Corey, he, he couldn't read very well. He basically, when he did Lucas, I think he was 14 and they were supposed to have a tutor on set and they did, but the, and all the, you know, all he had to do is say, you know, get out of here and the tutor's not going to fight. He's not going to make mm -hmm. him work, you know, and what kid wants to do that when they can be fawned over by sycophants all day on the set. And so it, this is why it broke my heart because I, I've seen so many people do videos like against him claiming he was a Satanist and all this. And it was a lie. It was a flat out lie. And his mom lived for him. Judy adored this boy. And I just remember him being in a bathtub in my house, looking like a little kid who could barely read, who was popping Valium like they were candy because his nerves were so bad and no mm. movie studios could even insure him because of all of his potential for overdose. If they start a film, well, they can't be sure he won't die. And so nobody wanted to insure the movie because you can lose millions mm. if you start a movie and can't finish it. Mm. So he was stuck not being able to get work. And, and what else is he going to do? And uh, then if you get a chance, like you got that little uh, reality thing, then he would he destroy himself because he started getting money again and started getting fame again and and so it was just this vicious circle and my my thing like I I know I don't know Corey Feldman I talked to him on the phone a couple of times I met him in person I think three or four times uh, because Corey was you know living with me for a little while when he, his mom was up in Canada so when he was in in town he stayed with me <clears throat> when he was in the, the states. But apparently Feldman had a lot of uh, people molest him or something, which he came out and said. Now, Corey never divulged uh, anybody molesting him to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but I get the impression that he was exposed to sexuality far too young. And that he saw things that he shouldn't have seen at his age. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, his whole childhood was stripped from him. The, the, the studio system chewed him up, spit him out like a product. And when he was used up, they kicked him to the side, mm -hmm. basically to die. Now, it, it, it was really heartbreaking to see because he really was just a little boy. He was in his late 20s 
um, when he was staying with me. I was a little older, I think, just a couple years. And uh, he, uh, I wish you guys could have seen that side of him. So I do know that happens. I've also seen, I was talking about last week, you know, Anne Haish, Margot Hemingway, all these people that were sane and doing well have a mental breakdown to where it's really bad. But here's the thing. I don't know if the media, if their propaganda machines are trying to make them look bad mm -hmm. to the public as some kind of punishment for not doing something they're supposed to be doing, or if they really did break because of the pressure and the sickness. And I will tell you, I remember, I can't tell you who was in the room or what was going on. Okay. I, mm -hmm. I can't. But I will tell you that it was after premiere of one of my films that I was producing. There's, I had a lot of celebrity neighbors. And I remember sitting in the room, the living room, and the mixture of celebrities, not, not just movie stars, but like adult entertainment famous people. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you, mm -hmm. you know, Ron Jeremy was my neighbor. And... And uh, I actually, get, yeah, I gave him a part in one of my films. But they, the mixture of people you would have never believed were in the same room and what was going on in the house at the same time. I remember having an inner dialogue. Like, I nobody would believe me if I told them who was here and what was going on in this house. Like, nobody would believe me. Like, right across the hall from me was a big... Um, soap opera star too, like people in my building. Uh, and so actually I ran into Hugh Grant right before he got arrested with Divine Brown and he was walking through the Running Canyon Park in his dress pants and loafers. It was very bizarre because it's a runner's park. Now I know he was trolling for prostitutes. He didn't know exactly where to go. I, I would have pointed mm -hmm. it two blocks south. <laughs> but <laughs> it was such a sick environment and... Mm. The sycophant thing is what's crazy. Like nobody would tell him no. Like no matter how destructive his behavior, I was the only, so I ended up being like a mother figure to him. I was the only one that'd say no, no. And I was bad in my own addiction, but I knew he was going to die. I go, dude, no, you can't drink that and take all those pills. You're going to die. You know, mm -hmm. and nobody does that. Everybody's mm -hmm. just like, person because they don't want to upset the celebrity and, and lose their either meal ticket or their famous friend. And it's really, really sick. Um, I will tell you also, I saw quite a few young ladies that were um, a, around my age, it would have been in the 90s, you know, so like, um, uh, you, you know, the people that were famous at the time I was uh, mm -hmm. out they're working. Uh, there was like Tara Reed and those young ladies. Now, I'm not talking about them specifically. I'm just saying that group that, yeah. that all came out, Lindsay Lohan and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I do know they, they all broke. Like something happened uh, once they got to a certain level of fame where most of them broke into either really, really bizarre behavior or total like drug addiction insanity where they were hearing voices and did you uh, notice about this being around age 30 for a lot of people sorry yeah, go on just yeah. right absolutely that is that's that is the age the programming right. breaks down okay that was the that thing. yeah i was gonna say because britney spears started acting that way lindsay lohan started acting out uh there was a couple girls i knew personally that were doing heavy 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 drugs and uh just it got really really sick and why so is I, why yeah. is that though guys do you think that the programming starts breaking down around 30. i don't know um yeah. it's a very consistent what do you think renee i, I mean it could be that you don't know brain matures mm -hmm. yeah well, i don't know why here's here's the thing like i can't confirm they were programmed mm -hmm. i can just can i can just confirm that there's a really yeah. cool environment and i think after a while um, it, the mind splits. It has to. It's mm. to like in this glass house, and uh, you can't trust anyone. Like you, you can't trust you. You, you can't even trust your best friend. You don't know if they have a motive for for mm. being there for you. You don't know it, and you're basically uh, it, it's really hard. And now, 
you know, I really do have a lot of sympathy because uh, for celebrities and why they act that way to fans sometimes, it's scary. You don't know which one's going to come up and shoot you, like which one's obsessed with you, which one. And so, because uh, a lot of times these stalker people, it turns into hate, you know, and um, mm -hmm. it's very scary how people start to act. So I, I, that's a really interesting thing, Angel, because it really is around that age that I saw a lot of them either leave the industry and go into seclusion. Like they decided mm -hmm. they wanted to get a new yep. something and leave the industry altogether. I don't know if they were given an ultimatum, you know, and they just chose out or uh, they just could, they, they couldn't handle it anymore. Or if somebody, you know, uh, I, I just know a lot of them, a, a large handful of them, really broke down and there's mm -hmm. bizarre behavior happening and mental breaks. You know, I said before, Anne Hayes is a very intelligent woman. And okay. for that to happen, I don't know if you guys think she's wandering around in some strange lady's yard and like didn't know what yep. was going on. She said a bunch of other weird stuff too. I think about yes. aliens and stuff. Yes. It, it, it's a paranoia that is done so i i really don't know it seems to be worse in the ones that grow up as child stars it does mm. it seems like the disney kids they seem to have it pretty bad and uh one of my best friends she was a, a child star she was a character actress and she did like wonder years and uh uh something to heaven whatever that show was with michael landon and uh she left she left the industry it was it, it was too much it was too much. I remember she, the thought of it, she would do bit parts of my movies because it was fine. She likes the acting part. She just didn't like the, the it traumatized her to even mm -hmm. having to go out and meet people for the role. Like something happened to where she, she couldn't handle having to meet people uh, to get cast. So uh, I think these kids are exposed far too young to sexuality. I know that poor, what's her name that did the Wizard of Oz? She was older. She was in her 20s when she did uh, Wizard of Oz, but Judy Garland. But I know that they, they that poor girl, they would starve her. She couldn't, she would only be allowed a broth. She had a lady with her mm -hmm. 24 hours a day that controlled everything she did. And I imagine yeah. it was a prison. So that's that's the part of the, the Hollywood scene I know about. Mm -hmm. I cannot to you know legit program but what let me tell you here real quick is that if you want to know what's going on i believe hollywood's telling you so when you look at these movies and just uh, like i said last week a couple popped in my mind the movie split the movie manchurian candidate and then uh just tonight on uh, uh captain america they have that winter soldier where they string a few words together you know like mm -hmm. um, uh, benign, 17, freight car. And, and it's just like, uh, in split and split, they said his name, Wendell Crumb, Kevin Wendell. Mm. They say it like in a specific way and they string these things together and their mind snaps to another altar. And that's mm -hmm. three just off the top of my head where they're showing that. So there must be something to this. It's some, mm. you know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, and it's right. like it's not like something that people normal people can relate to at all. So it's always so seems so random. Like, but they show it to you repeatedly as if it's normal to to have like to where we'd have some sort of touchstone or 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 like reference point for this, but we don't only from other movies. But I have noticed too, like um, like that my best friend. That's what happened to her around uh, in her in, when you know late twenties, um, and right around when she and I turned thirty that was when everything started to really go haywire. Like she, um, you know, was having, she was, she was recording herself getting up in the middle of the night, going to her computer, uh, uh, talking and doing really weird things in the camera. And um, she was basically, you know, I started seeing this, this spirit, you know, that was, that was attached to her. And she was like getting Baker acted and stuff because of this, this spirit that was um, like, harassing her and you know she thought she was hallucinating or something and um everything just started to, to to really go bad and a lot of times these people will end up getting institutionalized around that age um 
you know, and that's really consistent. We've seen that a lot in, in Hollywood. So I, mm-hmm. I, uh, I think it's, I, and I, I agree, Renee, they tell it to us, they show it to us all the time. I saw when my friend would change alters, which, you know, I never noticed or, or realized that was happening um, growing up. Although I do remember the time that, you know, sorry to be graphic, but the time that I thought, I thought, I don't think this is actually, I don't think she, well, let's just say I don't think it was her first time but in at the time I thought it was it was she we were like 14 we were over at our friend's house and here's a really really weird thing her her stupid annoying older brother that we all hated suddenly like put Jay well my friend in a trance-like state by saying Mm -hmm. I don't know what he said to her but she changed and he was he he was able to beckon her to his bedroom and I and our friend we were physically trying to like restrain. I, I was mainly, I was trying to get her out of that bedroom. I was fighting. I was fighting him. I was fighting them because I'd never seen her like this. Like I knew she didn't like him. And I, I and I knew that um, he was disgusting. And I knew that he, that, that he was coaxing her to go. He was like, you know, mm. 17. She was, a, at the time, I thought at least that she was a virgin. And he was somehow coercing her to go sleep with him in, um, in his room. And it was so weird because she was in a complete trance and I couldn't understand why she was acting this way. I, like she was just, she had a dazed look in her eye. Like she was a zombie. And so too, that's why I was trying to physically get a hold of her because I knew that that was the only way I was going to be able to, like, she wouldn't have resisted me because she wasn't acting autonomously, but she was just kind of like zombified following his dis- instructions to come into mm-hmm. his bedroom. And I knew that if I could just get a hold of her and yank her out of there, I could get her, you know, I could, like, I felt like I was saving her. Um, and I'll never forget. It was like an hour. I was standing outside of that bedroom door arguing with him, uh, trying to get him to get, to let her go to, to put, cause I, I, I couldn't understand what was wrong with her. And I thought, mm-hmm. is she just this much of a people pleaser where she can't suddenly, she can't say no, she can't tell him she doesn't want anything to do with him. It was so weird. And now I mm-hmm. realize he triggered her. He knew he knew, like, I think that that f- friend of mine mm. and ours, I think their fit because their family was weird. They had a weird family. And um, I think they were part of this cult. And he knew her uh, trigger words and he used them. And um, he just didn't, he underestimated how tenacious I was. So he should have, he shouldn't have, you know, made it so obvious in front of me. But I ended up, ha- I had to give up. I couldn't get a whole, I couldn't physically get her. He was, you know, she was in his room and he wouldn't let me through the door. And, and mm-hmm. I'll never forget how upset I was because I thought she lost her virginity to this horrible, uh, just idiot, like this jerk. I hate, he was so, he was awful, man, he was awful. And, um, and just like a loser, oh, he was gross. And I knew she didn't want anything to do with him, but you know, it was so weird. These are all these dots I didn't connect until later. I didn't know what I was looking at. It was just so bizarre to mm-hmm. see her like that. And, um, now, of course, I believe, you know, she'd been being abused, you know, all her life. But uh, at the time, I, you know, I thought she was a virgin. And so I was really upset about this. And, um, you know, that, but that's, that's kind of uh, one of the things you can look for, too, is just like, you know, if, if you're close to these people, you'll see that, like, sometimes they don't seem to be themselves. They're like, they might go into a very strangely passive state around other people, or people will report to you things that they did. Or, or, you know, that don't seem at all consistent with the person you think you know. And then they're like telling you, huh? I, I'm sorry. I, I, you were talking what? about sexuality, too. I just wanted to mention real quick that Cuties is up for an Oscar. The movie. You're with- kidding no. me. They're trolling yeah. us at this point. Uh. It's actually up for an Oscar. And it's we were talking about children sexualized young. I just wanted to mention that tonight. They are trolling. Guys, don't get. Listen. Everybody that's hearing that, I understand how enraging that is, but understand like that's why they're doing it. They're trolling yeah. at this point. They're totally trolling us. It's not. It's not. It, this is this is a huge troll, and they're doing this left, right, and center with everything. It's almost like they actually truly want a civil war in this country mm-hmm. between conservatives mm-hmm. and liberals. Um, I, I I'm starting to believe that they really want it. They're doing everything they can to make it happen. Yeah, I think that you're right about that. You know, when the Bible says, uh, the scripture that says nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. If you look it up, the word nation there is ethnos group. It means ethnos. 
right. which is an ethnic group. So what you have, this is what they've actually created. They want faction against faction. Right. Because as right. our Lord said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. And this is what they're doing. I agree. And so, I, you although know, it's kind of not cutting down quite so evenly along racial lines so much. No, as no, it's, it's not lines. even just racial. It's yeah. all these different factions. They've got every they got a they got a brand of division for anyone and everyone. They don't care as long as you're all divided. Is everyone? I actually all saw a black conservative woman talking about how she wants she wants to <laughs> separate or divide herself from liberal black people like like talking about we're gonna go to war if we like about other black people that are <laughs> that are liberal she's like and I, i'm just seeing this kind of rhetoric everywhere from everybody like you know uh I, i've been saying you know hey i don't know maybe you guys should start talking about secession like seceding because i don't see how it's avoidable like i, I think that this country is so polarized now that that red states and blue states <laughs> I, I think that there's going to be like violent a violent clash soon if uh, if people uh, you know it would it would be logical to just go your separate ways right but uh, people get up in arms when you say that but I mean I don't see any other I don't see that we could avoid bloodshed if, if I know that's what stopped. they want yeah I don't know how practical it is in in real life because when I'm out here just conducting my business I'm right, not seeing normal. all that craziness. I'm not oh, seeing any of that. It's the media doing that crap. Uh huh. Oh, I agree. I agree. I agree. But like putting cuties, like cuties, put, giving that an Oscar. Yeah, but we've like known, the, we've yeah. known for ages that they, they're just rewarding themselves. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like, oh, right. and the Oscar goes to whomever they Shh. want it to go to. It doesn't mean it was worthy of anything. And it's, right. and the Oscar itself is blooming idol. <gasps> so, this is more oh you know what you're right it's probably not the start of civil war that particular part of it you know what i think that is that's about fi like i think they're really trying to destroy hollywood and the establishment and because you know what it's not just conservatives that have a problem with cuties a whole lot of people that are democrats have a problem with cuties so that's just a really good way to have to make nobody support you like everybody i, I really think they're like intentionally playing the villain I really do. I mean, that's just ridiculous. You could, because there's so many liberals that came out against cuties that I don't think that um, that it would. That yeah, that but issue... you know, there's another Jedi mind trick they do with that. It's a mm -hmm. way of promoting it by seeming like you're against it. They do that a lot too. Yeah, yeah. There's like that true. old adage. Uh, it doesn't matter what you talk about me or say about me, as long as you're talking about me. That's the game they play. I told you that's one of the things they do in the media with all of these sex scandals is so they can say all manner of filthiness during prime time hours because if they say we're reporting the news and in in their so-called script if you will of what transpired if it's made up if they say something filthy they couldn't do it before like in regular programming but if they call it news they can say we're just reporting the facts and so at 6 a.m. in the morning, your little child sitting there getting ready for school or sitting there eating breakfast. If you have the TV on the background listening to the so-called news, they get to slide that old filthy, nasty word. And then that child hears it. I'm telling I know that's the objective. They have Learned I know descriptions it in my of sexual assault. I've seen like I've noticed yes. that more and more. It's like totally unnecessary yes. details. Right. And to be lewd because they know how the human mind works. So they, that's a trigger word to get the child to go, what is that? And go look it up when mom and daddy ain't looking. I'm telling you, this is how they operate. But this is what they've doing because they didn't do this. They didn't do this stuff 25, 30 years ago. They did not do it. They would just say this person was assaulted, blah, 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 whatever their claim was. And they didn't go into details. If you wanted details, you'd have had to go read the court manuscript. But or there if they did a tell all book, that's another one. Then now you're all interested. It's like a soap opera they create. Oh, then the person goes and writes a book about the trauma they suffered, uh, allegedly at the hands of this person. And then they make a million dollars off of this. I mean, it's just like, does it ever end? I mean, when does when does the illusion they've created, where is reality the end and the beginning? And this is what they're doing. We don't know what's real anymore. We really don't know what's real. And I talked about this a while ago when I was talking about deep fakes, general adversarial networks, 
it's kind of like that whole um <laughs> yes that's the bad part you, you oh, yeah there's so much disinformation on purpose so yeah that on purpose play playing with our minds literally remember yeah. what we said about that cia director that said yep. we'll know our mission is complete when everything the american people believe is a lie yeah. well <laughs> and they won't believe anything like i have a hard time believing anything in the media which is dangerous in itself yeah. Because then it's something right. real, real, if somebody really is suffering trauma and yep. really is suffering violence, yep. we don't know what's real anymore. That's right. I, I have a, I'm very skeptical of stuff. When I hear people on here claiming to be whistleblowers and talking about celebrities and stuff, I went like the one guy that did that video about my friend. I was like, why do you know this? Where do you get your info? He's never been in the industry, didn't know anybody, <laughs> in the industry, didn't work in it, didn't even know him. So see what I'm saying? You, you know? have to check these sources. Um, not saying it's all not true. It's just it's so hard to sort through because people come out and act like they're an expert on things. And you gotta you gotta, you know, nobody's unless they have like a name and say, I know them from here and this is this, mm -hmm. you know, it's very rare somebody will do that. Uh, and I, I don't really want anybody to be hurt publicly that's been victimized, you know, to have their information. Right. The thing is, uh, they they want it to be this way to where I can't believe anything. Like, I don't believe anything the news tells me. I I, <laughs> I, I know it's all propped up and then they'll they'll put two different sides, but both sides they made up. It's like they, mm -hmm. they want you. They. People need a struggle. And if if there's not a real thing to fight against, they they like to be they like victims, they like the underdog, they like to fight, they want a a most people like uh, you know, it's a self-righteousness thing. Everybody needs a cause. And it's just that the real it's called, you know, wag the dog, where mm -hmm. the real things, the real issues are swept under the rug and minimized. And you never hear about them, like Christians being slaughtered in India of all places. That's right. You know? That's right. Uh, and if you do put the information out here because you've been checking uh, uh, other countries' news, then they will take you down for hate speech for saying that Christians are being slaughtered. But they will give you some ridiculous thing to get you upset, uh, fighting over gender bathrooms. They they want you to look over here while they wag the dog and then you never yeah. know what's really going on you're looking at this superficial mess that's supposed to keep you occupied if you're not occupied with the latest sex tape scandal from some celebrity or some rapper you're uh looking at fake news or it doesn't have to be fake just something that's not really a big deal but getting people all stirred up over it so the real issues are not discussed like the danger of Islam to this country, that ideology. Now, I'm not saying Muslims. I have so many sweet, wonderful Muslim people, but they're westernized. And most Muslims don't even know what their Quran and their Hadith teach. But the mm -hmm. ideology, the people that take it seriously, they are a threat to women and they are a threat to mm -hmm. non-Muslims uh, because their very sources tell them to violently subjugate us. Uh, and that, you know, mm -hmm. of course, women are to be beaten and scourged because they're half as good as men and they were made, created less than you wouldn't believe what that Quran says about women. And we just eat it up. We believe everything we're told. You got Joe mm -hmm. Biden up there quoting some so-called peaceful Quranic verse, but he didn't read the whole thing in context. Mm -hmm. It was actually going on to promote jihad. If he'd have continued reading the verse in context, it was to uh, promote jihad. So, which is holy war, which is, oh, act, and they're not talking about a spiritual. The way the Bible says for us, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. That ain't what they're saying. Yeah, their whole foundation is to deny one that God is our Father, and two that Jesus is the Son of God and the Savior. So, mm -hmm. and then he died on the cross and was buried and rose again. They're saying he didn't even die. So uh, it, here's the thing, uh, all the- Which is the spirit of Antichrist. I'm sorry, I wanted to interject that. The, which is the spirit of Antichrist if you deny oh, right. Of course it is. Jesus. I mean, you can't get more Antichrist than that. Mm -hmm. John tells us that. Whoever denies the son 
mm-hmm. uh, is Antichrist. So That's right. the, the, the thing is, these are real issues that aren't being talked about. Mm-hmm. They, they want to stir you up over something else. They need you occupied. So they want to wag the dog. Misdirection. Trust me, nothing, girl. Nothing. Yeah. I said, when you see a bunch of crap going on in the media and they promote and promote and push and push and push and push and something, start looking around, start going and see what, you know, try to see if you can turn to C-SPAN and see what they're doing because they're doing something else. When they got you paying attention to one thing, they're doing something else with the other hand that they ain't letting you see. That's what they're doing. That's one of their tricks. They've been doing it forever. They've been running that same demonic playbook, misdirection. Miss Angel, but anyway. I- Sorry. Oh, uh, yes. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I wanted to uh, make that point. I am so sorry. Oh, okay. No, that's okay. Let me let me stop you guys right here. Because somebody's been very quiet back there and we ain't forget about him. <laughs> and I wanted to give him an, an opportunity. I told him I'm going to come to him and say, Ben, do you have anything you'd like to add? I know he, he wanted to lay back a little bit and relax tonight, but I just want to give him an opportunity to say something if he had some thoughts about some of the things that we've said so far. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity. There was something I was going to say, mention at some point, but I've already forgotten it. So <laughs> if I think of it, I'll <laughs> chime in. Okay, well, write it down next time so All you right. won't forget. So when I come to you, you you'll be ready to go because I want you to participate as much as you want to. So we, we went to Ben. We checked with Ben. He's still alive. Praise the Lord. He's still alive. So we're good. Let's go ahead, Sister, Sister Angel. I don't know oh, want you, you don't ever have thought. to apologize for that because you're the guest. Like I want, I, I'm just. When I talk for a long time, it's because I don't know if anybody has anything else to say, and I'm hoping that somebody will chime in <laughs> at a certain point. But, but, um, but yeah, I watched that. Uh, what is it? Her name is Ayan Hersi, uh, something. She's a, a Somali uh, intellectual who who talked about what well, that that quote that Joe Biden said. That yeah, he finished it. Yeah, I, I shared her video. She's great. I told you, you can't stump this angel. You cannot stump this angel. We can't do it. I've tried. She's a, a Christian now. Yes, is she Christian? Oh, that's really great. I didn't even know if she was. Yes. Did you know that the lead singer of the Misfits is Christian now? She's an she's an ex uh, Muslim. If it's the same lady I'm thinking about. Yes, she's she's Somali. She's got she's real pretty. Uh, and the she's gender- like, against women uh for islam she, yes she, yes and she comes in talking about how like she did a really great uh interview about how even though she lived in like the netherlands or something first when she left somalia like how how america is even just so much greater and why she appreciates it and like the dangers of like the the leftist uh and in your version islam yes. has whole areas that are sharia enforced in europe right now Yep, 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 and and uh, unbelievers can't walk down the street there for fear of their. That's what I've heard. I've heard that. I know that uh, Ben, Ben's, uh, you know, he lives not he lives in Michigan, so he's been in Dearborn, and he actually, uh, to my surprise, you know, uh, which was actually I was I was happy to hear this. He because I thought Dearborn, Michigan, was like some no go zone now, but he said that the Muslims there are some of the nicest people you could ever meet. Sure. Well, um, American yes. Muslims, they don't really yeah. know what Islam teaches. The, the, right. the, the over where it's actually enforced and they actually believe what the Quran says, that's what real Islam is. Well, and here's the thing about Islam is it, they have so many sneaky little doctrines where it, it allows them to believe what they want to believe. Well, instead of no. instead of believing what it was like like because there's this doctrine where it's like it doesn't have to be consistent like they're like basically their their scriptures don't have to be consistent their doctrines don't have to be consistent so like oh uh, like it seems like a lot of Muslims, there's always some explanation for why no 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 that hadith wasn't true and all that stuff and they claim but the latest stuff that, that was, was called the abrogated verses are actually the peaceful ones so the all the ones the reason the earlier verses were peaceful is because Muhammad was a minority. Once he right. said you're only peaceful until you're uppermost. So once you have control, the majority control yep. of an area, now you enforce and violently subjugate. And if the Christians and Jews will not convert, you pay a jizya as a second class citizen, protection money. So mm-hmm. it's yep. the, the thing is. The people here that are is that are uh, in the Islam faith, they're not real Muslims in the sense that yeah. they are not living true 
to the Quran because they want it doesn't work with their Western values. Like they exactly. patriotism, they love this country too. And so if they were to really live by the Hadith and the and, and the Quran, what they try to do is change what the verses mean to get around it or say it's been aggravated, but they, they can't really do that. Uh, so yeah. the, the good Muslims are ISIS and Al Qaeda. They are uh -huh. people to what their seventh century caravan robbing pedophile uh, uh, prophet was. I mean, let's right. just get tortured. Money. He advocated rape. He advocated temporary prostitution, three day marriage, give him a garment or some money after three days. That's prostitution. And that you could rape a captive woman, even if her yep. husband was present. Because yep. Allah gave a revelation and he conveniently got revelations for everything he wants. His six year old child bride, who he consummated the marriage with at age nine, yep. said that he had never, she had never seen women suffer as much as the believing women, which were beaten to mm -hmm. the point that they were green. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. oh, there's so many really crazy things in the, the Quran. And you know, my ex, uh, he's, you know, actually it's funny. He's also Somali. He uh, was an atheist when we were, when we were uh, engaged, he was an atheist and he had been raised Muslim, but he had lost faith in Islam. And he told me something. He said, you know, what happened was I, we were all scrambling around to figure out what time we were supposed to break the fast over here in Canada, because, you know, they were from Somalia. That was a different, like, it, it, however it works, it's like, uh, Mecca. they have to break. Yeah, they have to break. Yeah, it's based on that. And it, it's like, they have to break a fast at a certain time. But he, he realized that that religion wasn't divine because the, it was clearly like the way that you break the fast was clearly determined based in like if you were to live in that region of the world where right. Islam was, it, it didn't actually apply universally. And Plus, that was what did it for him. The direction of prayer from Jerusalem after the Jews rejected him as a false prophet, then he got mad at them and changed the direction of prayer to Mecca. Right, right, right. And, but, no. but, and you know, and I wish that he had kept with that because, you know, he saw it clear as day. He saw that it, it, it was not divine. It couldn't be divine because that was so flawed. But then he went back to Islam because he started to see the evil in the world. And that was his, you know, that was his tradition. That was how he was raised. So pulled the wool over the eyes of black people here in America with Islam. Because oh. Muhammad was white. They're so racist. Black. Yeah. He said Satan That's was right. a man. Right. And that if you call him black or say he's dark skin, you are to be executed. So he was a yeah. racist, horrible man. And, but they yeah. don't tell you that. They give you the westernized version by saying Christianity is the white man's religion. They got Muhammad Ali or Cassius Clay. And what's interesting is Cassius mm. Clay was named after a great slave of abolitionist. So he changed uh, his name from an abolitionist yeah. to the name yeah. of that's right. And, the, and the Arab slave trade was un, like un, like it was the worst in all history. The Arab one of the worst trade. ones. That's right. And That's they true. they castrated them. I mean, they're just and, and they took people from all over. The and world, they're still too. selling people in slavery. I had yep. a video I wanted to post in my community right. section, but I didn't want people to get depressed about right now the certain Google apps. Okay, because Google's the one that's like in control behind all these apps and stuff. They were, they were selling people on these various apps. I'm not going to name yep. any of them, but they yep. were all related to Google. They were available in the Play Store. Wow. They are selling them right now in some of these Islamic countries like mm -hmm. Yemen and other places. Okay, yep. I saw the video and it was done by BBC, so I'm not making this up. Y'all can, I'll, I'll post it in my community section when we get done with the broadcast. And they went into great length. It's about an hour long showing how they were purchasing these people. And what they do is they claim that they're um, going to be like housekeepers and things of that uh, nature. And so then when they, they get them, they take their passport and mm -hmm. then they start auctioning them after they've used yeah. them the way they want. Some of them get raped and everything else. And then the, the person is not permitted to call their family or any of that. And they take their passport. They put them in to whatever slavery it is that they want them to do, whatever it is they want them to do. And then when they're done with them, they sell them to whoever the highest bid bidder is on these apps. Yes, and then they, they give them the passport 
and and they do the same thing and they just yeah. keep doing it unless the person yeah. can find a way to escape. Yep, and they have a girl. This is how corrupt their systems in in Pakistan. A 13 year old girl was taken by a Muslim man. He tried to kill her. Okay, he wanted to marry her. She was Christian, and he forced her into conversion. They go to court. She's screaming. Her mother's in the court. She wants to go with her mother. He comes up with a fake birth certificate saying she's 18, that she willingly converted to Islam and is now his wife. There is nothing they can do. She's screaming for a mother. Her mother says she's only 13, but he gives the judge, the corrupt judge, a 18 year old birth certificate that's totally fake while she's screaming for her mother and he gets to take her home. So he's basically raping her, stealing her from her family, and now she's in Islam. That's Sharia law. That's the law. That's going on right now. This right now, today, y'all. That's right. And then the media, oh. you know, that's what I say. These people, these slaves, literal these, sex slaves, these little girls, yes. the group, and they wear them out. If they, they're lucky if they find a man to marry them after they've been used up. That's their lucky chance that somebody will marry. Some Muslim man will keep them. But they just sell them and sell them either into servitude, like she said, for labor. And usually the women have it the worst. They're they're sold into sex slavery. Like those little girls, the Boko Haram girls. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And it's because they're yeah, corrupt. Yeah. I de support it. Don't let anybody tell you it doesn't or tries to twist these things up. There's two, I've looked at Evan Abbas, I've looked at Saheed Muslim, I've looked at all those hadiths, and they all confirm what's going on there. He was a wicked man. It is the easiest religion to prove false. Uh, and it was set up by the Catholic Church, and they don't even know that. Uh-huh. And, and the dream or the vision, the trip he had to the farthest mosque, supposedly Jerusalem, where he went to the farthest mosque, there wasn't even a temple there. In the sixth century, I mean that's easy to to show that's a lie that he went there and describes the mosque and all that. There was nothing there; it was rubble from seventy A.D. So the they try to say Abraham and Ishmael built the Kaaba. It, that thing was built a thousand years <laughs> after Abraham lived, twelve yeah. miles away. They do everything to try to make it look legit. The Quran says to refer to our gospels and the and the Torah to confirm the Quran. But when they go to ours, it says, uh, no, he's basically a false prophet. So what do they say? Your, your scriptures have been corrupted. It's just, mm -hmm. it's so easy to prove false, but they will not hear. They are so indoctrinated. They won't. Well, it attaches to their pride too, because it's not just a religion; it's like a culture. It's like their whole identity. It's not like in other like other religions where it's kind of your religion and it's sort of separate. They, they, their entire i their identity, their whole like everything that they think they are is well, tied up. Theocracy. Their government yep. is history. It's based on their religion. Yeah, and it's that pride where you're telling them, no, you're wrong, and everyone you ever respected, your family, your family all your people are wrong. Or kill you. The honor killings. We had uh, one here. The father killed both daughters here in Texas. Uh, and they were getting too westernized. And uh, the African gentleman telling his, it was he, Jesus really did a supernatural work over there, if y'all can find that testimony. But his own father uh, was killing him. He, he told him to drink the poison because he left Islam for Christ. Uh, the Lord saved him supernaturally. You wouldn't believe it. It's wonderful. But uh, that's what they do. They they are told to kill their own family members if they leave Islam. Don't let anybody tell you that there's, oh, there's no compulsion in religion. Yeah, that's abrogated. That's only until you're the uppermost. Mm -hmm. Then there's no compulsion. And, and this extremist kind of Islam has, like, you know, with the help of the U.S. government, has swept the the world like you know Somalia did not used to have a very extreme form of Islam at all right and now they're having like, like it was very lax and you know like my my ex's parents they knew he was like no longer like at the time he he didn't believe anymore and he was dating me and they didn't you know hurt him or threaten him or even throw him out he was still living with them at the time uh because they you know they came from the time in Somalia where it wasn't uh, extreme like that it was kind right. of 
more relaxed, but now they're having these crazy terrorist attacks over there. I forget the name of the Somali contingent of like the extremist Islam, but it's really coming back like all over the place. You know, they're trying to, you know, a lot of a lot of these cultures kind of found a way to tame Islam to where they could actually live, right, and not be miserable. And it wasn't good Islam, right, because you know it is a, a brutal religion. But it was, you know, they kind of just made allowances because they didn't want to live that way. And now, because when the our government and all this, um, mm -hmm. these neocons, they went and all this, you know, this war that we've we've waged has actually served to. They've installed extremists, um, yep. like Islamo fascists. Yep. You know, not the opposite. You know, they they, they claimed we were trying to fight it. What they were doing was, you know, was seeding it everywhere. I have a heart for them. I really do. Me too. My doctor's Muslim. He thinks terrorists are idiots. But th the thing is, there are many wonderful, peaceful, patriotic Muslims, and there are wonderful Muslims mm -hmm. all over the world. But the Islam, as a core doctrine, is dangerous if you really follow what it teaches now i'm not speaking against muslim people there's wonderful beautiful people just like there's wonderful beautiful buddhists and hindus uh it's it's not islam yeah. i am a well-informed christian on mm -hmm. islam i am right. not an islamophobe i am not mm -mm. afraid of muslim people but i am afraid of the sick death cult that is Islam by the seventh century caravan robber. He was a false prophet and his doctrines are straight from the devil. He himself thought he was demon possessed when he got his revelations. And guess what? His Catholic wife told him, no, it was an angel of God. He thought he was possessed mm -hmm. when it first happened. What angel of I God had, has ever come up to? I never knew she was Catholic. I can't yeah. believe Leanne never told me that. Maybe he doesn't know. Khadijah is a lot of them don't. He would have told me that. He would have told me that if he knew that. He didn't know that. He was he a rich very... widow. She was a rich right. widow, his first wife. And then he uh, married Aisha and all the, you know, when he became a prophet or whatever, he married the six year old, mm -hmm. became his favorite wife. But he didn't consummate it till she was nine. So, Ugh, I really, mean... crazy, really. Okay. Crazy. Sister Renee, I'm sorry to interrupt. We got this hot topic going to this conversation. I just wanted to inject something before I remind us of the time here uh, that I have met some, as you said, I don't even know if they were Muslim. I'll just say they're Middle Eastern because I didn't ask them their religion. You know, I would be presuming because there are a lot of uh, Middle Easterners that are Christian, too, that have, have immigrated in the country. A lot of them are called Coptic Christians and some other things. Um, so. I've met some really wonderful, nice, sweet. I mean, I've never even met Christians that nice. A lot of these people are oh, so yeah. nice. Very. I mean, uh, they would literally take the shirt off of their yeah. back for you. I mean, literally. Yeah. So we're not hating on anybody just because they're Middle Eastern or anything like that. That's yeah. not what's going on. We're talking about very specific details according to the Quran itself. And they're easily yeah. proven. All you have to do is read it. And yeah. we're not making it up. Now that being said, Sister Renee, yeah, you, this is your jumping off point, girl. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's twelve thirty. So much fun. I hate it. Nine thirty, California. Twelve thirty out there. I know you're having fun, and you know you're welcome back anytime. I've told you that you have open door, open invitation over here to to come on in anytime. There's a sane Christian, they have an open invitation. <laughs> So uh, you are always welcome, sister. So I'd like you to go ahead and say whatever you'd like to say in closing to um, the people before you jump off here. Well, Brother Ben, I didn't get to hear much from you, but I'm happy just that you're here. <laughs> I know it, I know you do so much work for all uh, so many ministries. Oh, yeah. It's, help. A, yeah. it's a labor of love. I just uh, tonight I was kind of need the night off is all. So I'll be back you next week. It, yep. You got it. I totally get it. Uh, and Miss Angel, thank you so much. It's always good to see you. And Sister Lisa, thank you. I have to do something on my channel soon because, you know, I haven't had a live, live show yeah. to do right. one. So uh, yes. we'll, we'll do a special one before Christmas sometime. Okay, that sounds awesome. Your right. kisses yeah. to you, Sister. Thank you so much. <laughs> Love you, Renee. Have a good Love day you. at church tomorrow. Thank you. Love you guys. Good night. Good night, good night Sister. Good night, Ray. Okay, we say goodnight to our guest, uh, Sister Angel. We're going to go on for just a little while longer, not much. 
I told you it's going to be a shorter broadcast tonight because I want everybody to get rest. We've we've all been under a lot. And I know uh, I've had a lot more attacks. And and I was talking to another sister about this last night, uh, well into the morning, as a matter of fact, about this, how the psychic attacks and spiritual attacks have increased like I've never seen in my walk as a believer uh, in these last few months uh, since all of this craziness has, has started and everything. And a lot of other Christians are saying they have had the same experience. So uh, when you're doing spiritual battle against these entities and whomever is sending those spirits, usually witches. I know whenever I start talking about witches, people start thinking I'm just making this stuff up. Like I'm just, I like I created the word witches. I mean, it's just, they're real. I mean, they exist and they are the enemies of Christians. Uh, I think Sister Angel, you need to mute yourself. Sweetie. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. No yeah, problem. I was something in the, trying to fix no the problem. Cabinet. But yeah, no, I agree. Uh, but those people need to understand witchcraft is not, it's not just people in hats. You know, right. Like you know, it's yeah, better. it's it's they're agents of the devil, and really, they we I don't know most Christians aren't taught this. They are your they are your sworn enemy when they've hollowed themselves out for evil. They hate Christians, and they they will lobby attacks against you. And sometimes when all hell's breaking loose, it's an attack. And so, you you know, you need to get into prayer and seek the Lord. You may have to fast some because you don't even know where's Lord, where is this coming from? So, you know, the Lord will reveal these things to you. Hey, somebody's coming after you in a, in a psychic attack and you're going to have to do battle. You can't just always ask somebody else for prayer. There may be a time you can't get a hold of anybody else. Then what are you going to do? OK, you need to know how to pray and stand up and fight and contend against uh, the children of the devil yourself right here in this book, you know, Ephesians six talks about it, but also, uh, prayer y'all prayer is one of your offensive weapons as well. And you need to learn how to pray for yourselves as well, because there may not be a time you can get a hold of anyone and ask him to pray. Okay. You will have to stand up and pray and fight against them. You should be doing that anyway. All right. But anyway, um, we're not going to carry on too much longer. Sister Angel, we're going to spend maybe about 20 minutes or so here talking about women. Uh, we wanted to continue from last week. We had talked about men, and we I think we came from a different perspective than people thought we were going to come at. I think they thought we were going to attack men, which just wasn't wasn't our intention at all, not what we want to do, and we're not going to uh, attack women tonight. But we had gotten into a phone conversation about this, uh, or, or it actually was a hangout afterwards, um, talking about this, and we talked about that problem and issue that we saw with men. And then we also talked about one of the issues and problems that we saw with women. And I wanted you to go ahead and share those thoughts with our, our audience here tonight. All right, I'll I'll start I'll start off at least. I don't want to go on another monologue. So, um, so you know, what, what, some of the things we were talking about was how. Well, I started by saying how I I'm at the point now where I don't even want women to have the right to vote because I'm so frustrated with a lot of the things that have happened in the country ever since uh, it became very common and you know I guess uh, legal for all women, not just you know landowners and stuff, to vote. If you look at actually the trajectory, the country's gone down. Um, in in combination with it's not just that women were voting it's also it was in combination with the fact that marriage uh, when you know became something that was more and more uncommon or something more and more optional to people and um, you know and then of course women entered the workforce and uh, it was kind of like women women be, were able to to then kind of vote for their own self-interest, which was a lot of times against the interest of, of the family, against the interest of, uh, of, you know, marriage. And when women got political influence, you know, it seemed like it coincided with the, with the destruction of the traditional family unit. Because, um, for instance, the, you know, well, when, you know, women are able to vote themselves, let's say, you know, more benefits from the government um, and, uh, you know, and support these policies that make it unnecessary for, for them to get married. Um, and of course, if you're incentivized to have children out of wedlock, um, 
uh, and uh, and and the more children you have out of wedlock, the more the more uh, welfare you receive. Uh, that's one of the things that has, you know, I believe it was just targeted attack on men and women and children when they started incentivizing these broken families. But um, uh, I just, uh, we were talking about how because they have made men and women rivals as opposed to complementary, like partners, like two halves of a whole, we, we've now become rivals to where even when you do get married, uh, a lot of times the you're 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 kind of like living as 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 as, uh, as competitors because you're both trying to work you're both trying to be breadwinners and then you're co-parenting at the same time if you have children as opposed to dividing the labor in a way that actually makes sense where um uh the man can you know go out and be the breadwinner which i would think nine times out of ten he is probably better suited for that uh for that activity, for that for that responsibility, and the woman uh, can actually uh, stay home with the children and actually devote her time to raising them, which is it's just very difficult to be a mother and have a job. A lot of women don't have the choice, but and those women I understand completely. Like if you're a single mom, I totally. I mean, I'm not judging you at all. You've got to do what you got to do. And listen, my husband is an incredible, phenomenal man, and he was raised by a single working mother. And he, you would never, you would never think it just from his character. You would never think that he was the, the, the only son of a, of a single mother who, you know, without, he didn't have a father, uh, his father, you know, abandoned him. Um, she was an exceptional, you know, she is an exceptional woman though. Um, but uh, so I know that, that there's plenty of exceptions to this rule, but on average, one of the things I really, I really hate now is cause I was, I was like this too. Um, I thought that it was my obligation that, that if like, you know, if I were to uh, get into a, uh, a serious relationship or, or get married, that I would be uh, responsible for part of the, you know, like half of the bills or whatever. And that, you know, almost like as if that's what a man wanted. He wanted somebody that was like, I don't know, like almost like a roommate, <laughs> a roommate that he had a romantic relationships with and maybe even uh, had children with. But this isn't the, this isn't like the most uh, functional and healthy dynamic for man and woman. I think that's why we see a whole lot of marriages like this ending in divorce, because you're you're you you don't realize it, but you really are kind of rivaling one another. And that way, you never actually get to fully appreciate the other person for the role that they um, that they you know fill, what they do. Uh, I know that um, you know my husband and I. We don't uh, we don't live like that. You know, I stay home with the kids, and he. He doesn't resent me for not uh, for not contributing financially. It took me a long time to get to where I was comfortable with that, you know, before I was saved, where I, I was comfortable with the idea of not contributing. Um, and I even tried to work myself and have him stay home with our first child, you know, with our with, with the, my daughter um, uh, initially, <laughs> and it was ridiculous. And it, you know, he he uh, he stayed home, but it was good though. It was like it was a good experience, but it was just totally out of whack and out of balance. And I was doing it out of guilt and shame because I thought that I needed to prove that I could do, like as if that was my job. Actually, I needed to prove that I could be just as much a man as he was, or that I was not bringing, pulling my weight in the relationship. You know what I mean? And um, eventually, uh, you know, I realized this isn't going to work because no, no homemaking was taking place while I was at work. You know, I'd come home and, you know, he of course would have, you know, uh, fed, fed our, you know, our baby and, and, and played with her and done things with her. Um, but, you know, there wasn't uh, any decorating going on or any cle like real cleaning going on. He might have washed the dishes, but he didn't have that impulse to make a home like a woman typically does. And, and that was when I really started to realize that that there's a reason why uh, we were supposed to fill different roles in the in the partnership. And so, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll just start off there. But yeah, I mean, we, we were talking about how that because of this and because women have abandoned or been tricked into abandoning a lot of this, they are sublimate, sublimating their natural urges and their, you know, the, their, the, the urge to nurture and to, and to um, care for others, kin keeping. They're sublimating that in unhealthy ways politically where we see, you know, of course, the phenomenon of the Karen right uh, mm -hmm. or the, uh, the this control freak conformity enforcing uh, they'll, they'll vote for these policies that are totally invasive they have no business they want more and more control over people just in in society because they're 
they're not actually using the urges they have to care for others and kind of run a household in the healthy uh, way that God ordained. So they're kind of coming out in all these crazy ways, especially with these younger women who are going to college and, uh, and thinking that what they need to do is become a career woman and, and, and get all of that sorted out before they have children. And then by the time they're 35, <laughs> they might have a long list of accomplishments career-wise, but they don't understand why they can't get married. They don't understand why, why they're having such a hard time finding love. And uh, a lot of times it's because a man, you know, that's not what he wants. He doesn't want a career woman. He wants a woman that's going to have his children. And if you've waited until 35 to even, even consider um, settling down in that way, you're, you're, you know, your, your time's almost up, <laughs> you know, for a lot of women, at least, uh, um, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're not as appealing and, and, and these women are just like, and then they get filled with rage, uh, because of, of the, you know, and bitterness. And you see a lot of like liberal, uh, women that, you know, have been in college and working, um, all their life and they, they get really angry and contemptuous about men. And I think it's because really, I think, you know, I think, we've just all been tricked so badly into having totally backwards expectations and, and to think that there's something wrong with, um, with being a mother and a homemaker. Like that's what makes the man's life worth it. It's that's what makes the, it worth it for him to go work a job all day. You're supposed to be creating that thing that he's, he's working, he's slaving away to uphold. That's what a woman is, you know, really was supposed to be doing. Um, so that he felt motivated. He didn't have any problem doing, you know, you know, working at, all the time. Because, I mean, you know, the average man, that's what he'll do. He'll, he'll spend almost all of his life just working. And that's why they usually die earlier. But it's worth it if he has um, a family at home and a woman who's actually making a home. As opposed to a roommate who's also who's working when, when he's home. And, you know, and she, or she's home when he's working. They're trading off shifts. And she, you know, if you're doing that all the time, it's not as easy to... Uh, to, 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 to make the home and to really just be there to tend to the emotional needs of the, of the family and of, of your husband. Now I know it's not possible or a lot of people think it's like they have to work, right? Like uh, now, listen, my husband does not have a very super well-paying job. I mean, I think he makes like, uh, it's hard to calculate cause he gets time, you know, he gets, uh, he goes on call and then he makes like a lot more money than he, you know, like the 20 something, 23 an hour he makes normally. Um, but let's say he makes between like 45, 50,000 a year, you know, and we have four kids, but because it's a priority for us to stay, for me to be home with the kids and homeschool, we, we make it work. It's, it's actually doable. And we don't have food stamps. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I, we'd actually qualify for them because we have our fourth child. We have enough kids now where they, they would consider us eligible, I believe, but we don't have them. Um, you know, we have t two vehicles, uh, we, we have, we have what we need. Um, we don't have like money to go on like vacation just whenever we want and uh, stuff like that. But I mean, I think it's a, it's a worthwhile trade-off, uh, to, to actually be able to stay at home with my kids. And I think that, um, I, I truly do believe though, that, that men have to be more assertive in this way, because a lot of women, I know I was like this, we think that's what you want. We think that you want us to work. We think that you would resent us if we didn't. Right. And you probably think that it, that we'd be mad if you told us that you didn't want us to work. So this is communication gap, I think, uh, where where uh, we think we're not allowed to want to have this traditional uh, marriage anymore. But um, I'm not sure if that was the direction you wanted to go in. But that's just kind of me starting off with it, at least because uh, I we, we talked for a long time that night. Lisa. Well, I'll, I'll step in and say. Uh, Sorry, I mean, yeah, I was worried that my phone died. I no, no, no. Wait, no, I don't hear anybody. No, I mean, uh, at the risk of sounding like a, a you know chauvinist or whatever, I, I wish more women understood it. It's it's so refreshing to hear you say that because like you totally get uh, what a man wants, and um, and most women don't. Uh, it, I I have I have a similar relationship with my wife, but that's I feel like we're kind of unusual nowadays. Um, yeah. Where definitely that's, you know, my wife doesn't work. Um, not that I'm against her. Actually, she does. She does work. I take that back. She does actually work. But your at, children are grown. Yes. She works at a right. local church. Yeah, so um, and it's it's very, right. it's like, 
it's probably like 15 hours a week. Um, right. And, right. And that's really, I mean, it's just when you have young children, it's a different story. Yeah. You know, like yeah, yeah. really young kids. You know. And, um, but yeah, like you said, it, it, that it would be, um, like my brothers, for example, they have, uh, well, one, one of my brothers and he's, he's not a believer. Um, and both of his wives, they're, they're both Harvard graduates. And so they're, you know, Mr. They're, they're, you know, they're go getting people and they think they got it all figured out, but I think they're very unhappy. Um, and you know, they, they have a good relationship, but I think they're very un, unhappy, unfulfilled. Um, they're unable to have children. They tried to, um, they tried to even adopt children. Uh, but because they were kind of, um, I think because they, they limited, uh, the, 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 the pool of children they were willing to adopt from, they, they were unsuccessful. They, I think they, they tried, like, they tried to adopt, adopt uh, uh, Asian children, um, and, mm -hmm. and they didn't work out. I think probably because, you know, uh, whatever the powers that be, uh, saw that they were too successful, you know, and they don't like that. Um, so, um, so the, yeah, they, they, they are very unfulfilled. And I think, again, they, they, nothing, they, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's wrong. everything about their relationship. It just, it just seems dysfunctional. Um, it's, you know, they, they get along. Okay. But it, it's, it's just dys dysfunctional. And we're, how long have they been married? Oh, probably since 2000. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, well, hey, that's, that's longer than, wait, are your parents mm -hmm. married? Well, here's the I'm thing. Sorry, I, think part, I think part of the reason they're married so long, my brother in particular, is that my 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 mother and father had a very heartbreaking relationship where my father was like totally in love with my mom, but she treated she still treats him like crap. Um, and she you know she she wanted to get divorced multiple times, but she stuck it. She stuck in there because of us kids, um, or yeah. at least my father convinced her of that. And now they're together just because out of convenience, I think. And she still treats him like crap. And my brother is still with. It, my, and so my brother would like again. He a divorce is like unthinkable uh, to him. Uh, not not that he, I don't think he, he would even consider it. But but I think he's in denial. I was going to say that tends to happen when when people have pa parents that are married um, and, and and didn't get divorced. I, I you know it's easier for it sets an example at least in one way or another where the where their children uh, don't get divorced very easily. Um, but. Uh, but yeah, I, I know you're saying it's a little bit different. It's it's almost more out of like trauma of seeing your 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 father go through that. Right. But still, an example all the same, where it's not just you don't just flippantly get divorced at the drop of a hat. Which you know, that's I think that's good. That's what God wants. But it is, you know, we it's like a roommate relationship when you live like that. It really is. That, like that's, I mean, that's, when you said that, that, I thought of my brother. That's exactly what it, it's like. It's very clinical, very cut and dry. You know, it's not it's not. Yeah, it's it's still see a lot of you know passion or mm -hmm. drive. It's just you know every day Happiest. kind of wind up the clock work jerk. Um, and uh, it's it's one day uh, you know every day is the same and it, it's it's very routine. Uh, they have their you know two point five weeks of vacation to an exotic location every year, but then um, it just they just seem very unfulfilled, very unhappy, and um. Uh, yeah, because I mean, both of them are draining all their energy at work, and if the woman's home, she at least has her emotional energy stored up to help, like, kind of regenerate and revive uh, the her husband's uh, emotional energy when he gets home. I, I noticed that for me, like, you know, my husband's been drained all day talking to people working, but um, I haven't been, you know, around very many people. I'm not drained. I have. I'm not all tapped out. So, so I'm able to, you know, kind of. Uh, uh, balance that out to and you know and it's he looks forward to coming home because you know it's like comfortable as opposed to coming home to someone who's also just tired and has been working all day and just wants to mm -hmm. tune out you know what I mean like that's that's a that's a, a really like I when we when I was working I, I couldn't even imagine him working at the same time because I realized we'd be like two ships passing in the night you know yes and I exactly. think that's mm -hmm. well I tried to chime in but so, I was on mute Okay, and I was wondering. Yeah, I thought I, I, I tried died. to answer this. Is the angel gonna think I didn't uh, respond? And again, I was preaching to the air because my mute was <laughs> my mute was on. But I was answering you, and and I was uh, saying, you know, when we were talking about men last week, we came from a perspective that I think was probably surprising to people that thought we were going to either attack men or you know come at it from a feminist perspective, but we we did not. And then also then tonight, you know, no one's saying that women, this is the only charge for women. 
I mean, most assuredly, if a woman wants to be married, then this is what is is going to be a part of marriage. Okay. Yes. Um, right. You know, there's nothing um, wrong with being single either. Right. So if no, a person no, decides no. they want to be single, then that has its own give and take, just like marriage. So, yes. but you know, and, like and, also, and I want to just make sure that for people lost people. Yeah. No. Yeah. And I'm, I'm also not talking to, to women who are believers who believe what God's word says um, and uh, about them and about, you know, just the, like the meaning of everything. Right. It's it's the women mm-hmm. that are, are 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 not under under God's authority, who who don't believe in the Bible. And they I mean, they're just kind of like lost out there now because mm-hmm. all the things that gave even lost women like that actually were you know, because we were designed to be a help. A meet, sense of right? purpose. Yes, it gave them a sense of mm-hmm. purpose, even if they were lost. Now, just you know, everything's been turned upside down, where, you know, women think that they're somehow being oppressed uh, by being expected to do what they were, de- like, literally designed to want to do. And whether they want to admit, and not listen, not every woman wants to do it. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in general, in general, you know, I see this a lot where, man you'll see women who are who are just in denial of of so many things and they try to do everything in some or unorthodox way in a relationship or you know they think it's oh you know children don't need fathers now or whatever they're going to have a baby because they still want to have a baby you know because most women I, mean, I was the least you know maternal of any woman that i really knew every woman that i knew even if she was liberal i was the only one i knew that didn't actually want to have children like they would also even my more liberal friends, they would say they wanted to have children one day because it's really hardwired into women. I didn't actually want to until I ended up having my, you know, uh, when, when uh, you know, I, I, I had my first child and it was a surprise. My mom had just died. Um, and I was so turned upside down that it was like I was looking for any meaning whatsoever. And so that was I was surprised to find out that I actually was looking forward to having the baby. But I had never really been interested in it. Um but uh, most women are not that way, but because they are den- in denial about how they were created and, 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 um, you know, the, just sort of what, 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 how God designed things to, to where both people would be the happiest. They just don't know what they're doing and they don't, they don't understand their own emotions. They don't understand their own, um, instincts. And so they, they a lot of them get very bitter and they think that they can like, you know, when you're young, you think you don't want, you know, you don't want a family or you think that you don't need that to have meaning and you think that your career will give you meaning or something. Like, I mean, we're raised now as, as girls and boys to think that that's what our ultimate, like, fulfillment in life is, is whatever job we work. You know, this applies to men and women. I mean, you know, we're told to go to college and really pick the right career so that we can love what we do. Right. And, and mm-hmm. that's something that I, you know, learned. I was so surprised because I was always kind of an intellectual and I was interested in all kinds of different possible careers. Um, and I thought I would be the type of person that would would really be fulfilled by, you know, an interesting career path. But you know what? It's not <laughs> that's really not what for most of us, that's not really what matters in life. And once you, but see for women, see, you know, men can often have start over even late in life because they can still have children, but women can't. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of times, and it's one thing if you've consciously made that decision and you, you know, who you are and everything, but these, you know, younger women who are not under God's authority, they don't, they don't believe the Bible. They, they are just, they believe whatever, like crazy programming the media is indoctrinated them with growing up. Uh, you know, about feminism and all that stuff. And then they, they only realize how lonely they're going to be um, when it's too late and they don't have God to lean on. You know, they don't have, they don't believe anything. And that's when they become very angry. And they're a lot of the ones I truly believe are pushing abortion. These women that are childless and angry and, and godless. And they're, it's almost like out of a bitterness, you see a lot of it, like a lot of the most, like avid pro- abortion proponents are are older women um mm. and a lot of them don't have children um um and they're you know total like you know they don't have any faith in anything and I, and it's like almost like out of a bitterness yeah out that's of, my like, sister-in-law like that's that's my sister really? that, you you explained her exactly um explain describe well she just mm-hmm. she's just very She's uh anti. I think she. It's very obvious that uh, just based on her, our, on her politics, and I know she's not uh, 
she I she's a professor of faith uh, that she is exactly what you just described. And I think, like you said, the whole um, the whole idea of you know, like you said, the world is upside down. So they she never had a sense of satisfaction or um, purpose, real purpose. And she's kind of become numb, so where she doesn't realize, you know, when she looks at people like us, like, like we're just crazy, like we don't, you know, we're just kind of, you know, just kind of, you know, archaic people that, um, that you know, aren't, aren't progressive and, and thinking forward and thinking about the world and, and the, you know, not thinking about the world at large that we're, you know, we're heading to an extinction event or something like that, you know. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Oh, we are. <laughs> we are. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Not the kind she's thinking of, you know. I know I was like that too. I would, I said all kinds of stuff like that. I mean, deep in my gut, I think I always knew that 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 the end would come, like like the Bible said. So that was kind of what was informing my gut feeling. It wasn't like global warming or anything. It was just the sense I had that there would be an end of the world, and it wouldn't be all that far <laughs> far off in the future. And um, but yeah, I mean, it's almost like a bitterness, like 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 they they subconsciously don't want other young women to have what they forfeited or something it's kind of what I see and it's Mm -hmm. like they try to convert you know see because women are so emotional Uh, God designed us to be you know emotional now some are more so than others I don't think I'm really that emotional but but uh, oftentimes women (laughs) most of the time women are emotionally driven to where they're not logical and they don't know why they feel what they feel they don't really understand what's causing them to think or feel the things that they're that they're thinking and feeling, and so they they kind of it's all, it almost seems like they're emotionally dishonest. But a lot of times I don't think they really understand their urges or what's driving them. But that's why you'll see women you'll say it like oh hell hath no fury like a woman scorned right. But it's because they're so um, they, 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 women do have a high propensity for bitterness and vindictiveness, mm-hmm. and I think mm-hmm. that a lot of what society is suffering right now is the it's the wrath of the of, of of women who have been tricked and lied to, but they don't even realize that. They don't actually even yeah. realize that they've been lied to and tricked into into totally destroying their life and ro- wasting wasting their life. And 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 I mean, we have to see like even at these like riots and stuff, you know, with mm-hmm. Antifa and everything. It's mostly women, angry horrible young women, just absolutely you know, and even with BLM, it's just young women who are just filled with rage and contempt and this violence. And you wonder mm. why that is. And it's because women are more emotional. So I truly think they suffer the most from, um, mm. from the deception that's being waged on society. Now, men suffer in silence because they have been victimized by this society quite a bit, especially with like family courts and everything. But this yeah. victim mentality, I, before anybody gets, gets me wrong, is, is, is total poison and men definitely don't need to start feeling like victims just because of of the way they are they're being the <laughs> they're villainized right now because you know god does hold men responsible at the end of the day and and men have the ability to turn it around uh men will have to turn it around women won't do it the men, women will not be the ones to turn things around men mm-hmm. actually have to step up and turn it around and guide the women to the right way and actually have a backbone and not be afraid to be called sexist or whatever. It's just silliness, you know, like you're, yeah. the, w- women need that direction. And so God will never look at you and say, Oh, you, you know, poor men, they're the victim. God doesn't, I don't think God really acknowledges victims. I don't think he thinks any mm-hmm. of us are victims except maybe children, you know, because mm-hmm. to be a victim, it's like, you know, to be as if you're not culpable as if, as if you're, you know, it's a, and it's a very addictive mentality everybody's competing for that status now and um and women think that they have it handed to them on a platter they they have just this chip on their shoulder about everything they think that you know when in reality men are (laughs) men are extremely good to women especially in the west and that's not always the case especially in other areas of the world and other times you know uh in history um but because of christianity's influence i believe west women in the west have been have had the had the best of it at least and mm-hmm. they're the angriest at the men isn't that funny mm. isn't that funny how that works <laughs> because <Yeah>. the, <laughs> they're, they're the ones so full of contempt toward men even though um they're the most sheltered and protected women in all of the world really i mean if you compare it to, to like islamic societies or indian 
in, like Indian women. I mean, they mm-hmm. you know, you wouldn't think of Hinduism. Uh, people think of it as like a, as a fun, you know, happy or, you know, lighthearted religion or something. That's just like, like kooky or whatever, but it's actually very, very hateful towards women. Press. The widows are supposed to be burned on the funeral pyre alive when their husbands die. Ugh. In traditional Hinduism, the widows are supposed to be burned alive wow. uh, with their husband's body because there's nothing left for them. <laughs> that's, you know, it's only Christianity wow. that's really kind to women. And that's the, that's mm-hmm. the real evil part of it is that's where you see feminism rising up like the Jezebel spirit. Um, trying to mm-hmm. to villainize and, and 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 point the finger at men and act like, like you know like to, just try to just destroy men really if you look at the mm-hmm. media in this country the way they talk about men it's yeah. just evil it's so it evil, is evil. <sighs> yeah i don't disagree I, I that's why you didn't hear me say much because i <laughs> i don't disagree with the the points that you're making sister there's there's a whole lot they flipped upside down and turned inside out and and jacked up in our culture and i think even to some degree the whole concept of people even leaving home as early as they do what the heck is an 18 year old gonna do starting out on their own struggling no you're supposed to stay and be a supportive role and member in that family and help and grow and nurture and once you're strong once you're secure maybe when you have the money that you done saved up to pay outright cash for your home you know, and it's still possible you might not be able to live in certain areas, but there are still places you can buy a house with land, very affordable. If you yep. work hard and save yep. your pennies, you can do it. It still can be done. And, right. you know, what we do, boot them out at 18. No. Well, you now it's one or the other. You boot them out or you yeah. let them stay indefinitely, but you don't actually encourage any type of working or independence no, or saving should, up. It's just yeah, that's not healthy either. Teenagers. Yeah. There can be the right balance, and there are people that exactly. do get it right, and that uh, you know, allow their children that are young adults to stay a healthy Christian home. Ain't nobody coming. My mother was that way. She's like, y'all can stay. But <laughs> right. ain't nobody coming in here if ain't no ring on it. Okay. Especially so, your daughters. Yes. No, ain't no no see that I'm gonna stop you right there. I love you. Ain't nobody coming up in this house ain't got a ring on it. Because even the boys, yes, they, I agree. The, I agree. The men, because they've been given, they do that boys will be boys thing. No. Oh, I don't no. agree with that at all. No, I don't agree with that at all. What I was saying was that <laughs> that um, you know, I could see somebody like 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 sending their son out into the world. To, have, to, to, to get his house oh, in order so he can find a wife. No, that's not what I'm talking about. But I, but I'm not I don't about want that. my daughter going out and getting her house in order to find a husband. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't talking so about that. that. Yeah, I yeah, wasn't yeah, talking that's about what that. I, I know what you're saying. Okay. I'm talking now. I understand what you're saying. I was talking about coming back into her home. Like if she would say, okay, you can live here uh, until you get your yourself in order and you get your money together and you get your focus or your training, whatever it was you were doing to strike out in life. But if you get if you want to bring somebody through that door <laughs> that's going into your bedroom, they got to be a ring on it. OK, that's what she was saying. Ain't nobody right. coming up in here. Y'all ain't married. So, you know, you have to you have to set your boundaries. Everybody has to be in agreement that you're going to whatever the established order of that home is, because if there's a father there, he's still the head of that house. So whatever the structure is for that household, everybody's still got to be submitted to him, whether you grown or not. That's his house. So that once there's structure. And, and there's order and it's established and everybody's in agreement. People can live peaceably in a household together. Other cultures do it. America's all twisted out with this stuff. But if people establish the right boundaries and everybody agrees, and again, being submitted to Christ, I'm talking about believers. I ain't talking about unbelievers. And I'm talking about people who are submitted to Christ and people are praying and we, we looking out for one another and there's love. Yeah, there's going to be disagreements. And then, then that gets settled in accordance, hopefully, with these scriptures and what we're supposed to be doing submitted to Christ. If we're doing those things, there's no reason to boot somebody out just because they're 18. So, you know, we, we also need to shed some of these demonic constructs that have been fostered in a culture that wasn't biblically centered to begin with. And I'm talking about Christ-centeredness, not just what churches teach. Because a lot of the crap we learned in churches, we're finding out now is, was a bunch of bunk. So, so this is so. What I'm saying is, the family should be the one who decides what's right for themselves. 
in accordance with the scriptures, in accordance with the light of Christ, in accordance with love and loving one another. And hopefully everybody's healthy because I've told you, you don't stay where it ain't healthy. Really, if if somebody's being abusive and everything, can you even call them family? I mean, if they're abused, that's not family. That's not love. So, yes, you would get the heck out of there as fast as you could. But hopefully you're not jumping out of the frying pan and into the fire. So, you know, everything has to be considered prayerfully, carefully submitted to Christ. All of the things that we're discussing is always within the concept of that, you know, uh, under his headship. Hus there's Jesus, you know, the, 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 uh, the Godhead, okay? Then under that, the husband, the wife, the children. And, you know, it, things being done decently and in order. And that's that's all we're talking about. So, you know, people, hey, you gonna take away from this whatever you decide you want to take away from it tonight. I had fun talking uh, with you guys. And it was a very lively stuff going on in the chat tonight. Really lively, interesting discussions. But I, I can't get distracted by it because then I can't follow. If you've ever tried to type, or read and listen while somebody else is talking, you, you, you're not going to be doing either one very effectively. So, you know, I tried to remain focused on what my guest and my panelists were discussing tonight. And uh, apologies for any tef technical difficulties. We did the best we could <laughs> with what we had tonight. As I said, you guys, it's been, for me, it's been a very hectic last month or so. I don't come on here and complain about stuff. You know, I don't tell you things that are necessarily going on in my personal life, but it's been, it's been hard. So I understand what people are saying, man, I'm just blown out. I'm just worn, you know, I get it, believe me. And that's why I don't want to put further encumbrances on people. We're going to keep the broadcast short tonight. We're going to end it in just a moment or two. So I want to give the uh, panelists an opportunity to say their last thoughts and what they want to discuss. and then. Um, we're, we're going to go ahead and end the broadcast. I love all of y'all. Uh, but if, if I, I just want to say one other thing, because it was something that was very disturbing to me. Uh, and I, I know people mean well, but people will come on and they'll quote scripture and quote scripture. And a lot of those scriptures are taken out of context and they throw them down, they throw them on the table. And then, you know, they get mad if, if you say something about it because they didn't pulled it out of context or didn't threw it down. And as new covenant, I want to put emphasis on that because everybody that calls themselves Christian ain't Christian. And everybody that say they believers ain't believers. And everybody who claims certain things or have monikers for their channel names uh, are not, quote, in the faith. It's very specific what we believe as new covenant saints of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we, are, we understand that the letter of this word is not the spirit of this word. And I told y'all, I don't want to see violence going back and forth in the chat and hostility and in these words. Yeah, you can pull words out of the Bible that are in there. But if they're being in, used in a way that is attacking someone else or attacking any groups of people, I'm going to say something about it and I might delete your comment. Because that kind of thing should not be going on. And I don't want to see it in my chat. And I don't care if you never come back. I don't. I love everybody, but I'm not going to buy foolishness. And spirits of hostility will not ever be welcomed here. As directed at any group of people. Now, if you're describing uh, what is actually going on in a particular religion and I think everyone here does try to be very careful about the language they use because we're not attacking people. The Bible says in the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ, and I'm paraphrasing, there's going to be every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And that has always been the Lord's objective. So, you know, please, I'm going to ask y'all, and then I'm telling you, this is the only one I'm giving. I'm telling you right now. If I see hostility and violence in language directed at anybody in these chats going forward, I'm going to block you. I don't want to, but I'm asking you to police yourselves. 
I keep asking you, and some of you are being very hard-headed. So I'm telling you, I'm not going to buy that foolishness. It has to stop, and it's going to stop tonight. I love free speech. I'm all for it. You can say anything you want to say, but there's a way to say it. I don't want to have to address this again. I'm just going to start deleting and blocking people. It's just, it's just how it's going to have to be. The letter of this word is not the spirit of this word. And the letter of the law killeth. And Jesus did not come to destroy, but to save. And if you don't understand that, then maybe you shouldn't be in a chat for a while. Maybe you ought to go sit down somewhere and read your Bible a little bit better. Now, that being said, I love y'all. And I just had to, I had to get that off my chest. And I had to. Because that stuff has to stop. And maybe other people don't care. But right here, I want this to be about understanding, growing, learning. Free discussion. I want you to say what you want to say, but you need to be very careful how you say it. Because I also don't want my channel blocked and destroyed because of somebody being a bonehead in the chat room. Because I told you these chats replay live. And your words are going to really be immoral, immortalized forever as long as this is streaming. So you think you might want to be a little more cautious about what you're saying in in the chat because you don't want to be deemed that idiot forever and i didn't call any names if the shoe fits wear it okay i'm done sister angel i'd like you to go ahead and say what you'd like to say in your last minute thoughts tonight um well yeah i didn't see the chat I, i've never actually am looking at the chat when we're doing these streams but you know, uh, just when it comes to any, any type of people that have lost, you know, keep in mind, the last thing God wants for them is is his death while they're lost, you know. And um, uh, I, I think he would he would sooner have a believer give their life to save a, a, a lost person uh, so that they might still have the chance to believe than, uh, than he would see those people uh, punished unto death for their sins or for whatever they're involved in because that's – and that's the real spirit of the word and the law now you know that's what we're, we're supposed to be um really uh putting those people first um understanding that we've already we're already taken care of and also um you know it, it's hard to speak that way without coming in a spirit of pride as if as if you know yourself as an unbeliever was somehow any less offensive to god than than these people and uh, i really try to check myself on that because i know that um you know that 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 I I was you know wicked beyond all imagination when when I was when I was lost and I wouldn't and I would have thought I was a good person, right? So um, I try not to look down on any of the people that are you know uh, involved in things that you know of course the the, the the God's word says are sin even even extreme profound sin, um, because I know that they're they they're just as lost as I was and uh, and and God's looking for them. You know, and he is uh, wanting nothing more than for them to, to, to find the truth and to and to accept his free gift. And uh, and then he can he can start renewing their mind and uh, and, sh and and showing them the error of their ways. Uh, but, um, yeah, it doesn't ever do us any any good as, as believers or people trying to reach uh, unbelievers to, to come in a spirit of hate and judgment because that just uh, hardens people and makes them feel judged. And it's that's not. There's never any, um, I don't really see, see how there's ever much of a point in that, except for, you know, I guess in the rare case where you want to strike fear into their hearts that maybe they would, uh, they would turn to the Lord. But in a lot of cases, you know, those, especially nowadays, that's a very hard thing to do. That's a hard kind of person to find because so many people are convinced that they're right because the world has made sure of that. The world has made sure that, that, uh, you know, everybody gets to feel somehow that uh, they're entitled to, to whatever they want to do and, and whatever they believe and whatever their proclivities are and that uh, for you to have any opinion about it whatsoever is, is judgmental and that's the ultimate sin, right, in today's world, <laughs> having any standards whatsoever. But, but um, yep, and I just uh, uh, had, a, had a great time tonight. And, uh, I'm not sure. Are we doing a broadcast next week? I didn't know if I knew you were taking off. Uh, no, 
as a okay. matter of fact, I, they were not. I will be putting up a video for next week, uh, okay. in at the eight o'clock hour. But next week, I'll, we will be taking a rest. Uh, one, you know, I don't know who observes the holiday and and who doesn't, uh, which is really not the issue. I do like to take that one day a month to spend time with my family and also time in prayer and reflection about you know what we're going to do next in, in the coming days yeah. ahead. Uh, also, I want, as, as I said before, I want you guys to be able to have a break and just rest and enjoy time with your family because I do appreciate the fact that you guys are giving up. Um, I know it's later for you, so you've spent most of the Saturday with your family, but I still want, you know, even if you did have a busy day with your family, you're pretty much worn out by the time you get time to uh, settle down and do this broadcast if you had a long day. So I always want to be cognizant of that for you guys. So, Brother Ben. Yes, ma'am. What would you like to say to the people this evening in closing? Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure exactly what was going on in chat either. Um so uh but um like I I I'm not I'm not able to watch it as much as I want to. Um I a lot of times I'll go back after the fact and look at it. Um but yeah, I think I think you're right. Uh, we, we we you know God doesn't uh you know Jesus rebuked uh even his disciples when they were saying, "You should we should we uh draw down fire from heaven he said you don't know what spirit you are um you know you know we we are uh not look 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 at con condemning people um but but like you said to save people that's what we're here to do uh not not that we're actually doing the saving but to to evangelize and that's what we're here to do um but um yeah i mean the next time we uh are able to um uh join again i'll be ready and raring to go with something more substantial to talk about um i also been going through some stuff lately personally and then just with just some various drama going on it's, it's taking its toll and it just need it kind of stymied me for a little bit and so um I, but i'll be ready and, and more than more than happy to be a full participant next time and i'm looking forward to that um but uh, a great a great discussion again tonight i just like it's so great that every time I, I we get together, it's like wow. It's just like it's just you guys confirm the same things that I think of, and it's like wow. Okay, I'm not. It's good to have that confirmation because I I feel like I I have an understanding of certain things, but when I hear from other believers that I know have the are, that are spirit filled as well, it just it just um it's just really edifying, and it's just really good to always to spend time with you guys. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And thank you to everyone that joined us this evening. I do appreciate you joining us for this conversation and our discussion about monarch programming and then women and what are the, you know, the problems and the trappings that we see. And it's really is just a setup. Everybody's been set up to buy into these false demonic constructs that the system, whatever group you want to point to and blame, they're just one, you know, being in in the hill of beings that's used against humanity in general to bring everything down and against um, the Bible and the ways of the Lord and how the Lord would have us to be and conduct ourselves under his headship. So we I think we all see that as believers. And I know for the most part, we're preaching to the choir. But for those who might happen upon this video that may not be in a it's something for them to consider and something for them to compare and see what's going on that we're all getting played if we buy into these demonic constructs so i thank all of you again for your time i'm so glad that you joined us this evening and for everyone who is on the east coast good morning for those of you who are still on the west coast it's good evening thank you again blessings beloved of the most high god in the mighty name of king jesus amen good night